Hey everybody, David with St. Cards here, and we are going to talk through the Religious Expansion, which is the 2020 Booster Deck, which comes with 36 St. Cards, as well as 6 Diamond Treasures. And once you get your Diamond Treasures out, and you've also got your cards, you're going to be able to see here uh, the rules as they lay out here um, on the front card and on the back card. You've got a brand new Jesus card here, uh, which we'll talk through. This is, of course, St. Mary Magdalene adoring our Lord on the morning of the resurrection. And this is a beautiful painting of Jesus in the desert, which uh, I came across and just thought it was so beautiful, especially as we're talking about these religious vocations and, and giving it all uh, for Jesus and joining him there in the desert um, in so many different ways. Uh, and then we're also going to be emphasizing in this expansion, the final four orders. Uh, we've already talked through in the Mendicant Order expansion video, uh, those six uh, orders. We've talked about the six orders from the Monastic and Cleric's Regular Order expansion. And there's four more spots left on the Purple Game Mat. And you might be wondering at this point, what is the Purple Game Mat? Well, you'll want to take a look at the Mendicant Order expansion, which is what, where you're going to find the, the Purple Game Mat. This is what you're going to need to take advantage of all of the different orders that are in the religious um, expansion. So if you haven't uh, you had a chance to get a hold of the Purple Game that, make sure you check out the Mendicant Order expansion. If you've got the Mendicant Order expansion at home, you'll want to take the rule book for the Mendicant Order expansion and open it up and set it to the side for reference. And that is also, um, a, uh, that's a really handy way to kind of keep track of what each of these things do. Or you can take the, the, the rules from the, the religious expansion and place them together like this and just set them to the side. And the rules that are found here are exactly the same as the ones found in the four orders um, in the Dominican uh, order expansion rules. So we'll set those down and let's talk through what each of these orders do. We'll start off with Blessed Mariana de Jesus Navarro, a wonderful Mercedarian. And you might be thinking, I've never heard of the Mercedarian order. Before we worked on this expansion, I didn't know what the Mercedarians were either. A fantastic order to get to know. Uh, and one of the mendicant orders. So you could say you could add the Mercedarians to that whole mendicant order crew as well. But when you play a Mercedarian, there's a couple of cool things that happen. You're first going to take the top card of the deck and flip it over. And whatever the difference in the centuries are, you're going to note. In this case, I've got St. Nicholas of Myra. And so I'm going to note the difference between St. Nicholas of Myra, which he passed away in the fourth century. Blessed Mariana was born in the 16th century. So there's a difference of 12. So I'm actually going to get to gain 12 treasure, which is a ton of treasure. If I had turned over a wild card, the wild card would be worth one. And then in that case, I would get 15. But St. Nicholas is a fantastic giver of gifts. And I got 12 treasure from playing uh, St. Nicholas of Myra. Now I've got an option. I can either leave St. Nicholas of Myra there underneath Blessed Mariana, or I can take St. Nicholas into my hand. And that's a decision I get to make. Then I get to go into the storehouse and get 12 treasures. And so I'm gonna do that real quick. I've got seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And now I get to give these treasures to the players that I'm playing with. I've been playing with one person, I have to give them all to that person. If I'm playing with multiple people, I can divide them up uh, however I want. So I got to receive treasure and I got the benefit of, of this great legacy of St. Nicholas of Myra and, and leading all the way to Blessed Mariana, that difference in centuries. So now I got to benefit from it. Now I'm gonna just give away and that giveaway comes from the storehouse. So I have received treasure and now I get to give it away. Now, here is the next caveat. If I'm playing with multiple players and I decide to give all 12 of these treasures to just one player, then I get to receive another 12. The rule is this, that the most that I give away to one single player is an additional bonus that I get to receive. And that helps to emphasize the, uh, the, the economy of the Christian life, right? That we, we invest in others, others invest in us, and we are the body of Christ and we're all working together here. So let's just say uh, for this neighbor over here, I'm gonna give them two treasure. And for this neighbor over here, I'm gonna give them two treasure, which means I've got eight treasure left. I'm gonna give the person across from me eight treasures. And then I get to receive back the most that I gave to a single player. Well, I gave this one two, this one two, that one eight, I get to get eight back. If I even it out and say I went four, four, and four, I would only get to get four back. So in this case, I got 12, plus I get another eight for playing one Mercedarian. 
that's not too that's not too bad at all, right? And again, uh, St. Nicholas of Myra ended up being a really good card for Blessed Mariana, but let's just say the next card is St. Francis de Sales. Well, St. Francis de Sales is exactly the same centuries as Blessed Mariana. So sometimes it may not work out as well, right? But in this case, if St. Francis de Sales got turned around, I wouldn't receive any treasure and I wouldn't have any treasure to give away, but that's okay. I can actually take St. Francis de Sales into my hand as a doctor of the church if I wanted to. So it's not all wasted whenever you play a Mercedarian, but it's especially effective if you know what the top card is before you play a Mercedarian. Next, we're gonna take a look at the Vincentians and there's a really cool component when you play a Vincentian Saint card. In this case, we're gonna play St. Francis Regis Clet right here on the Vincentian space. If you're looking to gain some cards, this is a great kind of card to play, the Vincentian, because you're gonna to get to draw five cards into your hand, one, two, three, four, five, and you get to keep three of them, but you also have to give two of these away. Now, you can't bring them into your hand. You have to decide about this before you uh, bring the three into your hand. So I'm gonna take, let's see, I'm gonna take this one and this one, and I'm gonna give them away to the person across from me. Now, when you give the card away as a Vincentian, uh, three treasure are going to go along with each card. So if I decide to give one to my neighbor to the left and one to my neighbor to the right, then I would take three treasure from the storehouse to give each of those players. In this case, since I uh, gave both to my neighbor across the way, I need to give them six treasure from the storehouse. And the other three cards, I get to put right into my hand. So the Vincentian is a great way to gain cards uh, during the game, and it helps to emphasize the life of the Vincentian, which is to give to the poor, right? We're giving away, um, devo you're, we're giving, spreading devotion to the saints, we're giving treasure away to others, we don't get any treasure ourselves. And then, if anything, we're just increasing our devotion to the saints by bringing them into our hands. So, so it helps to emphasize uh, the beauty of the Vincentian Order, St. Vincent de Paul, St. Louis de Marillac, and all of the great Vincentians that have come to us. Uh, we're so grateful for each of them. Next, we're gonna talk through the Passionists. Now, the Passionists are unique in the game of St. Cards in that you uh, really probably wanna wait until the very end of the game uh, before you play a Passionist Saint. And I'll share with you the reason why here in just a second. Uh, let's take St. Gabriel Placenti of Our Lady of Sorrows as an example. Let's say I'm ready to play St. Gabriel and I play him here on the Passionist space. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna look in the discard pile and I'm gonna count up how many religious men and women there are in the discard pile. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. I've got 11 religious men and women in the, in the discard pile. So brown and purple cards, uh, whether they're on the outside or the ribbons themselves. So I would get the 11 treasures from the storehouse for playing St. Gabriel Pacente of Our Lady of Sorrow. So it makes sense that the Passionists, you probably don't want to play them in the beginning of the game because there's not a whole lot of cards in the discard pile. So from a, so from a strategic perspective, you want to make sure that you save the Passionists for near the end of the game rather than playing them at the beginning of the game because obviously the discard pile is not going to be nearly as, uh, as tall uh, and full of religious men and women at the beginning as it will be near the end. So that is the Passionist Saints played on the Purple Game Mat. And finally, we have the Salesians. And of course, the Salesians were founded in 1859 by St. John Bosco in honor of St. Francis de Sales. And so let's find a, a good Salesian to play. We've got St. Dominic Savio right here, right? We're gonna play St. Dominic Savio on the Salesian space. And what's cool about the Salesians is when you play a Salesian card, you get to actually take another card from your hand and play it on top of the Salesian that you just played. So in this case, let's see, let me look at my hand and find a good match. Oh, here's St. Gemma Galgani. So then I'm gonna play St. Gemma Galgani with St. Dominic Savio and try to get as many matches as I can. That's why I was looking at my hand there. We have the 19th century, uh, youth in Western Europe. There's three matches there. I'm going to place her underneath St. Dominic Savio and you take the number of matches that you get and double them. So I would get six treasures and I'm going to go ahead and take six treasures from the storehouse for uh, for those matches and then the Salesian allows for you to give away which is of course what the order is all about is complete uh, death to self giving your entire life in service to God and his church. And so then I've got six treasures here. Now here's the cool part. If I give all six treasure to one person, I can draw, draw another card. Maybe I want another card. Or if I decide, eh, I'm just gonna divvy them up. I'm gonna give two to each player or one to this person, three to another and two to another, whatever I decide, then I don't get to draw the card, but that's okay. But if I give all that treasure to just one person that is perhaps the most in need, I can draw another card into my hand. And 
that's what the Salesian Saints do on the purple game map. And that rounds it out. This is the last four of the 16 orders that are emphasized in the 2020 collection in Saint Cards. And what we hope to do with this collection this year is just to emphasize in a way of thanks giving to the Lord for all of these holy men and women that have come before us to show us as a sign through their habit and through their prayer and through their resignation to the Lord, uh, the relationship and the intimacy that we are going to have with Christ in glory. And so a quick thank you to all the men and women who are watching this right now that are discerning the religious life or who are already consecrated into the religious life. Thank you for saying yes to the call of Christ to be one with him. Uh, you are a beautiful example for all of us and we are grateful for the gift that you give to the church and the treasury that you're pouring out into our lives and into the life of the church each and every day. We are so grateful to you. Thanks so much for watching this unboxing tutorial for the Religious Expansion, the 2020 uh, Booster Deck. Uh, we hope you have a fantastic day. And if, if you want to take a look at some of the other videos, you're welcome to do that. But thanks again so much for your attention, and we hope you have a great day. Take care.